the Spinal WA education video. It's on urinary incontinence and bladder management for the spinal cord injured community. I'm Mark. I've been in a wheelchair now for 26 years. I've been working, I've played sport, I do all sorts of things in and out of the community. Um, that's, that's me. This is my co-presenter, Samantha. Hi, I'm Sam. I've been in a wheelchair for 25 years from a spinal cord injury. Um, I'm also married, I'm a mum with two kids, I'm a social worker and uh, keep myself very busy in the community so managing my bladder is really important for me and hopefully that's what we'll also be able to help you with today. The purpose for doing this video today is to share information with you based on the experience of wheelies like myself and Mark and also advice from health professionals and to show you some of the products that are available that can make life easier when you're managing your bladder. And managing your bladder is really important after spinal cord injury to get on with having just a good life. So some of the reasons why we're doing this video and the reasons for managing your bladder um, are that you need to empty regularly, emptying your bladder so that you don't have damage to your kidneys helping um, to reduce urinary tract infections by having a good technique and clean technique for managing your bladder. Keeping dry and um, not having accidents will help reduce skin problems that you might have. And also for someone like myself with a higher level injury, autonomic dysreflexia is often caused from um, issues with bladder. That's one of the main triggers for autonomic dysreflexia. And of course, if you're managing continence and not having to worry about bladder issues, it's much easier when you're out and about um, at the pub, out with friends and those sorts of places. It increases your confidence. After discharge from hospital and over the years, your bladder routine is likely to change for all sorts of reasons. Try not to be despondent if things aren't working well. Um, just be prepared to try something new. There's lots of information on the internet, um, for example, the Spinal WA has a whole section on bladder management. Um, here we are on the Spinal WA website. There's other forums out there as well. The Paralysed Web Forum, Paralysed Veterans of America has another whole section on it. The Care Cure Community website has a lot of information as well. But please discuss any new approaches you want to try with your GP with your urology nurse or your specialist. Also talk to them if you've been unwell with infections, if you're, if you, and especially if you have a, a higher level injury and are susceptible to autonomic dysreflexia. In this case, addressing the symptoms as soon as possible is absolutely vital. And this includes checking if in, indwelling catheters or pseudopubic catheters are blocked, and so on. Consider getting yourself a medical emergency card, such as this one here, to carry out with you, they're invaluable and they, they're available from the um, spinal unit. There's lots of ways of buying continence products and there's lots of suppliers you can go through for continence products. Also, you know, I've found that there are times when I've run out and it's actually good to know that a lot of, there are things you can get from the chemist when you need to. But today we're very fortunate to have Amy Dwyer from Independence Australia who's a not-for-profit organisation that supply a big range of products. And Amy's here to show us some of those products today. So just to remember, we're not endorsing any particular brands. We just want to give you a good idea of all the different range of products that are out there. So thanks very much for coming today, Amy. Thanks for having me, Sam. It's Fantastic. Um, I should just also let people know that there's a couple of schemes. There's a federal scheme and a state scheme for getting funding to be able to get continence products and that information is all available on the Spinal WA website and also a lot of suppliers and um, manufacturers if you go to them directly can give you a sample product that you can try out if you're actually trying out something new. So now we're going to talk about intermittent catheters which are catheters which are for single use only and that you use once to empty your bladder and um, and these ones we're talking about to start with are the ones that are disposable so they're for single use only. Um, so what we've got on the table here in front of us 
is a female intermittent catheter and you'll notice that that's I think um, I'm not sure how long they are but they're obviously shorter than the male catheter which is a lot longer and the intermittent catheters as with all catheters come in different sizes so they have um, the thickness of this part of it is in different sizes so I think they come in like 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and higher ones that are used for in um, surgery and things like that but generally for um, most people uh, adults I believe that's 12s and 14s that are the most common that are used but you need to check with your doctor which one exactly you would be using but that's an important thing to remember when you're ordering the product that you get your size right as well as your length right as as a female the very long one might be good for hanging on to but uh, you might find a little bit too long <laughs> And certainly if you're a male, that one might be a little bit too short. We also have, um, one thing you'll notice is that the different gauge of catheter, so whether they're a 12 or a 14 or a 16, will often have a different coloured end. So this one here with the green end is a size 14. A white is a 12 and there are different colours for different sizes. So that's another good way of being able to know that you've got the right size. Some other types of intermittent catheters that you can get are the Speedy Cath, which is a catheter which is pre-lubricated. This is the Speedy Cath catheter here and you can see that when you open the package there's lubrication already there so that is one step that you don't have to do. Another type of intermittent catheter is a hands-free intermittent catheter or a no-touch catheter. And these have um, the plastic um, or a covering over the catheter that then you can push the catheter through as Amy is showing there so that you don't have to touch it with your fingers at all. And that's really useful if you're prone to getting urine retract infections. And these, of course, will both come in um, male and female sizes as well as the different gauges. Another type of catheter which is um, only available for women, I believe, is the compact speedy cath. And this is great for being able to keep in your purse and it just um, telescopes out to be a full-size catheter for a female and that's easy to then um, push back in together when you want to dispose of it as well. And that's some of the different types of intermittent catheters. There is a catheter which we don't have here today that we can show and that's also called a Kleine catheter which is an intermittent catheter that you can use more than once. If you're using a catheter like the Kleine catheter more than once though, you do have to be much more careful with cleaning and sterilising and keeping it in a safe place. But that's a catheter which is again available in both the male and female sizes and in the different lengths and keeps um, inside its own container that will keep it sterile as well as long as you clean it properly. With all of the different types of catheters, the tips of the catheter actually come in different uh, formations, different types. So if you have a look closely at the tip of this catheter here, this is what is the most common tip used and you can see the holes there that are in two different places. Some catheters will only have one hole in it. Some catheters have um, a cooed tip which is a slightly curved one. Some will have um, a straight tip like this one uh, and other, others have different shapes. The best thing to do is talk to your doctor, to your urology specialist and find out what's going to be the best catheter for you to use. Let's also talk about indwelling catheters. That's the other sort of catheter 
for uh, if you're wanting to keep a catheter in for either a long period of time or as a permanent catheter. So there's different types of indwelling catheters. There's catheters that are, go straight into your urethra as an indwelling catheter or a suprapubic catheter which goes into a special, specially made um, incision that's above your pubic bone and goes straight into your bladder. The catheter we've got on the table here now is an example of an indwelling catheter. So you can tell an indwelling catheter because it always has this extra section here which is where they put in the um, water that fills up a balloon that holds the catheter in place. Okay, within a, an indwelling catheter or a superpubic catheter, there's a balloon at the tip here. You fill it up through this connection here. Generally, with they generally take about 10 mils of water, but everyone's a little bit different. You can consult your urologist or urology professional. Fill it up here. Uh, it fills the balloon up here. There's a the, the holes at the side or lumen on the sides, and a particular style of tip on it as well. There's many different styles and sizes of indwelling catheters or suprapubic catheters, and with again different tips and different ends and different holes. There's the snub tip ones which have a hole in the end. There's uh, ones with different size balloons, ones with different size holes in there. Again, consult your urology professional because you can't just change your catheters without definitely uh, consulting a professional first. There's also different types. There's latex ones, there's silicon ones, there's silver coated ones. Again, consult your, your GP or your urology professional because there's so many different out types out there. If you're having a problem with one, there might be another that would be able to assist you better. There's many types of uridomes available on the market as well. There's silicone ones, there's latex ones, there's wide band, there's narrow band, non-adhesive ones and adhesive ones. If the non-adhesive ones, there's condoms and things available as well. Um, they use different types of strips or glues that come with those types of uh, urinary appliances. They all attach onto tubing in the leg, an extension tubing or a leg bag of some description. Here's a quick look at a, a quick urodome. These are generally for people with incontinence problems who don't typically use a suprapubic or an indwelling catheter. There's also literally hundreds of leg bags out there. There's different size leg bags. There's uh, small ones for sport. There's big ones as um, ranging from 300 millimeters, milliliters all the way up to 1.3 litre leg bags. Um, there's different styles of clamps at the end of them. There's these ones here with diff different uh, flip, flow, uh, flip clamps, different connectors at the end. Um, there's latex, non-latex, there's sterile, non-sterile. There is literally hundreds out there. Don't be afraid to trial new leg bags, but also always consult your urology professional because you don't want to be introducing infections um, or the potential to have an infection at any stage at all. There's a whole range of accessories when it comes to continence products and some of them might seem a bit strange, but it's always good to know what accessories you need for the products that you're using. So for example, if you don't have a pre-lubricated catheter, you should always make sure you have lubricant as one of the accessories that you have with you as something that you need to use every time you use a catheter. Some of the other accessories which we've got here on the table, this particular little green thing here is a helper for being able to put a catheter in if you're a quadriplegic such as myself. So it's something that can hook on your fingers and help you to feed a catheter in. We also have here some different accessories that come with leg bags, and I'll let Mark talk a little bit about those. There's different flip flow type valves, different clamps. This particular one here is a coloplast one, it has barbs on it. I, I use these ones, but there's two, two or three different types out there now. Um, there's this different type of flip flow valve to hook up to your super pubic catheter. Many, many different styles of leg straps. Every bag has its own leg strap variety. Um, there's leg straps available for all types of different bags. Again, there's, and also another one is 
a leg bag holder. So you slide this onto your leg and the leg bag actually sits inside this holder here, which another another style of thing. And a lot of leg bags also come pretty equipped with their own leg straps. So when you dispose of the bag, you obviously get another new strap to go with the bag. One of the other continence products that you can use are pads and um, pull-up pad type systems. And there's a whole range of different styles, different sizes that you can get for both men and women. Obviously, the, the pads and the pants for men are slightly different than the ones for women, so you need to make sure that if you are going to use them, you get the right ones. Pads and pants, um, padded pants, are probably something which you don't want to be using all the time because it can um, also cause pressure and skin issues as well. So if you've got your bladder management well, you shouldn't need to use pads and pants too often. But there's a wide range of products available, such as this type here, which are a pull-up pad for men. There are um, some other different ones here that are a small size. Fit inside your jocks. And yeah, will just fit inside your underpants. Other types here, which um, have different uh, elastic to go and fit different sizes of people. So there's a whole range and there's a whole range of different brands as well. It's always a good idea to get some samples, try them out, um, because what you might find is that one particular brand is uncomfortable for you, but another brand works um, and other people find that different brands work for them. So it's a good idea to try them out and this is a particular product which is very easy to get samples of. Just doing a small piece on overnight drainage. Of course, there's all types of different types of overnight drainage. There's all the different types of drainage bags. Typically, the largest one comes as a, a two-liter bag. There's, I think there's one other one that's slightly bigger, but I'm not 100% sure. Then you've got, you've got the whole range of overnight bottles. These overnight bottles, this is a, a two-liter one, but you can also get bigger ones if you require. I particularly, I use a, a four litre one, which is just a basically a water bottle with a tube that goes into the top, very similar to this one. Um, goes in there, plugs it straight straight into your, either into your leg bag, if you've got super pubic catheter on, you don't want to break the, the drainage system. Or if you clamp off your SPC, you can plug it straight into the clamp, or um, those types of things. Or a urodome as well, plug straight into the end of the urodome when you, you uh, wash your overnight bag out. If you ever get stuck overnight and you're looking for a drainage solution, you can probably just use any old bit of tubing that will connect onto your to your leg bag, plus a bucket or a four litre another four litre container or any vessel that will hold a considerable amount of urine. This is a one off. We need to talk a little bit about how you care for and clean the products and make sure that um, the things are sterile. Things like an overnight leg bag or the overnight um, drainage bottle are not actually sterile. So they're able to be rinsed out, flushed out, and just cleaned with soap and water as you would um, any other um, type of thing um, and be able to be used again for a short amount of time. There are some products as well which are specifically made to be reusable. So the Kleine catheter, for example, is a reusable catheter um, as well as um, some of the other uh, leg bags and things are made to be reusable and it will say that in the product description and those things then can be washed out in different ways such as um, soap and water using uh, Milton's or other sterile products but you need to check exactly what you can use with those specific products. Vinegar is another option that you can use and is quite right, widely recognised. The other thing we've got here on the table is just uh, some spray-on cleaning solution which you can use on skin. So that's actually something that can be used to clean urine and faecal matter from sensitive areas of your skin as well. It's made for that. And of course, any time that you're going to be doing um, catheters or touching any of your equipment. If you're not using gloves, you really need to make sure that you're using a hand sanitizer of some sort 
particularly if you're in public toilet places, just it's good practice to just make sure that you're always having a clean technique. And these little bottles of hand sanitizer are really handy to have in your purse or your bag. Remember the golden rule. Your hands must be very clean before catheterising, whether you use gloves or not. After you leave hospital, is, you're probably used to the uh, hospital bottles that they supply. There's other types available as well. There's, you know, all different shapes and sizes. Um, this one here is a bit medieval, but it's quite a good one. It holds quite a lot. And there's this other interesting one here. I'm not very good at demonstrating. Maybe Amy could come in here to help us out. It's a, a fold-out one, so very small to open, you just flick it open, pull it open, you can drain straight into the, to that, male or female, it's a positively brilliant idea, I think. No matter what you do, there is going to be some times when you might leak, and that's okay. Most of the time, no one else will even know, but there are some things you can do to help just be prepared. So a lot of people when they're out and about will have things like some spare undies, a spare pair of pants, maybe a spare cushion cover in their bag. Certainly if you are leaking a lot, talk to your doctor or talk to your urologist just in case there's anything that they can do to assist with that if there's any problems. But there's a whole range of products out there to help if you are leaking or if you just want to be sure that you're not going to have to change your sheets and things like that. So some of the products we've got here on the table today, there are mattress and bed protectors, um, pillowcase protectors that you can get in plastic. There are, there's a brand called Kylie, but there's also a number of other brands with different names, although you might hear most people talk about them still as Kylie's because that tends to be the generic term now, that come in all different sizes. So this one on the table is one that sits on top of a wheelchair or on top of a chair. You can get sizes that are single bed, queen bed and king, I'm not sure if you can get king size bed, but certainly you can get a range of sizes. A lot of people have bed protection that sits on top of their sheet and can tuck in to the sides of the mattress. Some people will just prefer having the mattress protection underneath the sheet. Either way it's okay. You can also find lots of different sizes of blueies which are like the plastic sheet with paper on top, the very fine paper that can soak up and they're one use disposable type product that is good for protecting your chair if you're using for example doing catheters in the chair or things like that you can put a bluey underneath you so that your chair cushion cover doesn't get wet. So there's a whole range of products out there that can assist with protecting both your bed and your chair when you're managing your bladder issues. So over time you sort of learn a few little tips and tricks um, to deal with continence issues. So Mark, what sort of tips have you got for people that you've found over the years? Well, one I've just brought in today is just a, a pair of jeans that I've modified. I just uh, split down the inside of the leg there and I attach some Velcro at the bottom so I can easily get to my clamp on my leg bag. So when I'm emptying my leg bag, I can just put my fingers in the side. I um, might take a photo of it later and put it on the website or on the video. And just close it over, that way I can, it looks okay. Nobody knows I've got a, a leg bag uh, clamp attached to my leg. I use that one as there. I've also got a hole drilled in my foot plate, so I poke my tube through the, the foot plate. So I always know where my tube is, it's not wandering around all over the place. So I can just wheel up to a drain and empty my leg bag out if I need to. Uh, those sort of tips. Also, if I'm out and about and I suddenly realise that, oops, my leg bag's too full and I've, it's over full and I'm not, or it's, uh, and I've leaked and I've actually got wet pants, I know we just, uh, tend I've spilt a beer on my lap so it looks like I've uh, you know, just been a bit too drunk or, or whatnot so people don't uh, you know, mistake me for actually wetting my pants, it's just, uh, yeah, I just tip beer all over myself or something like that so it looks like I've, someone spilled a drink on my lap. Uh, I tend to wear darker clothing, darker jeans, so if I ever do have an accident, then uh, especially when I'm out you know, socialising, um, that way you know, it's not as noticeable, they're just some general one-off tips that I, I go for, but accidents happen, so 
he's going to be aware of it and you know, hopefully it will be Some of the things that I've found useful has been, um, I always take with me just an extra pair of underpants in my backpack, just in case. Um, and I also, uh, I always use my intermittent one-use catheters when I'm out and about, because then I don't have to worry about um, you know, a clean environment because I know that they're already sterile and I only use my Kleine catheter which I can reuse when I'm at home because then I can make sure it's clean and kept in the freezer when I'm not using it and I find that that um, works for me in terms of keeping my incidence of urinary tract infections down as well. And I can't stress probably enough is that drinking enough water or drinking enough fluid during the day Always a great preventative of uh, urinary tract infections. Just keeping your fluid intake up um, was helping me a lot anyway. Yeah, drinking fluid is really important, particularly if you're using an intermittent catheter. You need to make sure you're drinking enough fluid, but also that you're drinking the right amount and making sure you're having catheters at the right time. So, it, again, it's one of those things that sometimes might take a little while before you can get the right balance, but that's okay. We hope that you found lots of the product information and the tips that we've given today really useful. Don't forget that if you need to try a product out, that if you contact one of the suppliers or contact the manufacturer, they're always very happy to give you samples. And there's also lots of information on many of the websites that we've talked about. Um, also the Spinal WA website, which Mark, you could talk a bit more about that. There's always information coming up on the Spinal WA website. Um, new stuff coming up all the time, new products, new suppliers, uh, new forums, there's all sorts of avenues that are out there, all sorts of new things opening up all the time. There's many different products coming onto the market all the time. Don't be afraid to ask about trying them. If you see something you may like, see a healthcare professional, um, they will, or a urinary healthcare professional, they can advise you whether that might, be, might work for you or not. And also, just yeah, check out the website. And don't forget that every year you should see your urology specialist and the urology um, nurses at the spinal unit. Really good idea just to keep on track so that you're not damaging your kidneys, that you're getting all the procedures that you need to do done for checking up. And you never know, there might be something new on the market that you haven't heard of yet that can actually help make your life a little bit easier. And um, keep managing your bladder well. Thank you very much. The spinal unit will be located at Fiona Stanley Hospital from mid-October 2014. After this time, annual urology reviews will be available but via the State Rehab Service outpatient appointment, not within the spinal unit itself. The autonomic dysreflexia card shown earlier in the video will be updated with the new unit's contact details.